A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. The first two and a half months of the year and this is the global temperature anomaly chart. No surprise, Europe and across much of Asia, in fact, uh, considerably warmer than normal. We've also got uh, warmer than normal conditions across uh, parts of the Middle East and um, Alaska, down the west coast of Canada. Um, but notice that the only region, the only true region uh, well to the north of the equator that has actually been cold than normal uh, during January, February and the first half of March is interestingly North America, as you can see here. Now, Joe Bastardi, who I follow um, and subscribe to uh, weatherbell.com, he has been alluding to the fact that the North American pattern this winter has been significantly driven by the West and East uh, Pacific oscillations here. So, in essence, the teleconnections over the Pacific Ocean has uh, driven the colder than normal, um, you know, first two months of, of, of the year across much of North America. But uh, certainly the, the warm waters over the North Pacific has affected Alaska and down the west coast of Canada. And of course, uh, you only have to look at what's been going on within the Arctic atmosphere that has driven the very warm winter across uh, Europe and across Northern Asia here, of course. Uh, strong polar vortex, increasingly strong uh, during the latter half of January, particularly so over February. And we had, of course, the positive Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation, and um, that has driven very mild ocean air uh, across uh, across Europe here. We've also seen that milder extend all the way across the uh, northern Eurasia, as you can see here. Interestingly enough, of course, the ongoing La Nina and somewhat of cooling within the tropical oceans has led to some very uh, cool conditions across much of Africa, uh, central and west China, extending to India, even parts of Australia colder than normal. And uh, as a direct response to the La Nina, being, of course, just to the west of the continent, we've got a very chilly central and western portion of South America here. So you can very, very easily connect up the ocean with the atmosphere in these charts here, because this is the ocean uh, temperature anomaly here uh, across uh, the Indian Ocean, uh, somewhat warmer than normal down the east coast of Africa. It's, it's actually colder than normal. Mediterranean is colder than normal. West Pacific colder than normal. And of course, you've still got that ring of cooling extending from Alaska down the western flank of of North America. La, um, La Nina is still evident, as you can see here. And uh, draw your attention here to the North Atlantic because we've seen significant cooling. That is a direct response, by the way, of having the strong polar vortex during February, increasing the jet stream, increasing the storminess, and that, of course, has meant two, three weeks of uh, of almost a constant storminess over the North Atlantic that forces cold air from deep below the surface, uh, cold ocean water, should I say, not air, deep below the surface to upwell. And uh, as, a, as a response to that, we're seeing a significant cooling over the North Atlantic. So much so that we've seen a drop of uh, over a half a degree above normal to below normal in the space of about, what, um, what a month and a half. So um, amazing what the atmosphere can do in terms of, of, of bringing somewhat temporary uh, but uh, quite abrupt alterations in ocean uh, temperature anomaly here so certainly a very interesting response uh, of ocean to atmosphere and atmosphere to ocean uh, <clears throat> seen over the last couple of months and it's going to be interesting to see with that cold the normal north atlantic are we going to see a response during the spring and even in uh, through the summertime as well <clears throat> excuse me uh, so it's going to be interesting to see that here of course the um the stratospheric warming the second phase of the warming well underway. Now we're seeing, of course, the all important um, response into the lower stratosphere and then troposphere as well. 
So we're seeing the warming taking place over the Arctic. That uh, is likely, highly likely, to create high latitude blocking during the second half of March and into particularly April. And uh, certainly the models are all over that response from stratosphere into troposphere. And the modeling is seeing cooler than normal conditions starting to show up. So this is off the ECMWF weeklies. You can see here that over the next uh, seven days, still very cold across uh, eastern and southeastern Europe, warm uh, from northwest uh, Russia, Scandinavia, through the Baltics, uh, down through the heart of uh, the western portion of Europe. Uh, but you can see here as I play through the loop, the turnaround taking place. And I, folks, believe that this is the response of what's going on in the stratosphere here. As I play through the loop, you can see the cooling taking place and watch the dates up at the very top because what we're seeing is the uh, the modeling indicating the persistency in that cooling holding through the month of April here. And this is going bang on to exactly what I've thought. It's still not a guarantee yet. I still might have egg in my face at the end of the day. But certainly the models are responding to what I've thought. The, the stratosphere, the troposphere, the warming taking place, the high latitude blocking is starting to show up within the, the, the Arctic region and the consequential cooling that is seen by the models that is lasting right the way through April here. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, whether this materialises or not. But certainly it will bring down the temperature of a uh, you know well above normal for the first two and a half months of the year over Europe and uh, it'll be interesting like I say I keep saying the word interesting uh, because it is weather and climate is very interesting indeed and I do appreciate the fact that you're staying on the channel we're now starting to get to the stage where many people drop off they're not as interested in spring weather or summer weather but I do urge you to stay on the channel and continue to watch the videos I, I I always try my best to keep things as interesting as possible, looking global as well as local, and uh, you know, looking at different aspects of the weather and trying to join up dots to see exactly why we get the weather that we get here in the British Isles and Western Europe here. Um, it's all very interesting stuff, and I do appreciate the fact that you tune into the videos, and uh, of course, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and, um, you know, we'll continue to watch the weather as it goes on and on. Hope you have a great afternoon and I'll hopefully be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.